you are adopted by Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And I think Brooklyn, I think movies, film, directors, I think Spike Lee. Yeah. Uh, we talked a lot about music videos, hip hop. Now let's switch over to film for a second. Mm-hmm. Spike Lee's controversial, always has been since he was young. Mm-hmm. Uh, did folks like him embrace you? Did, did the John Singletons of the world embrace you? And I ask you this only because mm-hmm. You know, I'm old enough to remember when there was another director out of uh, Brooklyn, Matty Rich. Rich. And yeah, Spike yeah. pretty much, he's straight out of Brooklyn when, when I was a kid. Yeah, uh, I remember that. Spike pretty much let him have it. His career is going to greener pastures. And even with Tyler Perry, mm-hmm. Spike um, was openly not a fan of his work. Mm-hmm. Do you find that the, the director community is more close knit in Hollywood or less close knit? Did, did you find that these guys who you may have looked up to now that you're out there and you're trying to get your feet in the game and get established coming from music videos to film? Like, what, what is it like with black directors out there? It's, it's interesting. The group of us that come from music videos and it's myself, um, Darren Grant, uh, Billy Senna, X, Chris, um, that, that come from music videos are Jeff Bird that are in television, Millicent Shelton, like that group of people. And I'm going from different eras, of course. Mm-hmm. Right. But we all <clears throat> are very active in TV directing right now in movies, mostly TV stuff. There's a, there's a tight knit, you know, we, um, we talk to each other often uh, when somebody has a show, somebody will post their show on their Instagram or respond, you know, that, that go that is happening. Um, there is like a, uh, like when I first moved to New York, I was an intern at 40 Acres. There was there was no synergy between myself and Spike Lee at all. I mean, I was way, I was like a locations intern. I wasn't even, you know, in the production part of it. So I wouldn't expect um, anything like that. But but as I got my own name and, and grew, the respect came with that, you know, he knew. And then, you know, I had to remind him like, dog, I started with you. Like, I, and he's like, oh, wow. Like, you know, he has, he put so many people on. Um, the John Singletons of the world, you know, John, I did a video for John um, for with uh, T.I. and the Pimp Squad click for, for um, Hustle and Flow with the soundtrack. So John and I have always been, have always been pretty cool. The, the Tupac movie kind of s- separated our relationship a bit in um, a couple things were said um, in the media, some by me, some by him, you know, and stuff like that. Um, and it's, it's interesting because, you know, you learn quickly that um, all your business don't need to be out there. Right. You know, uh, because like, while, while him and I had a, a and, and I say it was a small back and forth, but it was still respectful. The same time I would hear something that he would say, and this is before the movie came out. This is this is him having been let go of the film. I call him. So, you know, my thing was we could call each other and have a discussion. There's no need to be on this radio station and this thing and that thing. And it's like, dude, you John Singleton, like you have a major platform. You've been nominated for an Oscar. Like I look up to you, like you, you the OG, you know? But at the same time, there there has to be a a level of respect given um, to the situation, especially when we have a relationship, right? You can call me, I can call you. So the good thing, and I feel good about the before he passed, I actually talked to him. Um, I was on a set of Tales on Irv's Irv Gotti show, mm-hmm. and our producer was on the phone with him about another project they were doing. And he was saying, Yeah, I'm over here. He said, I'm here with Benny Boom. He said, Oh, you with Benny now? I said, Yeah. I said, Who's that? He said, That's John. I said, Yo, I said, Tell John what up. I wanted to see what he was going to say. He said, Tell Benny Boom. I said, What up? I said, Word. He says, He said that. So he put on speaker. I said, What up, man? He said, Good. What's up with you? I said, Oh, man, I'm chilling, man. You good? Like, Yeah, yeah, I'm good. You know, blah, 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 blah. I said, All right, man, I love you, man. And he said, I love you back. It's crazy, right? Wow. Wow. And that happened. Because it wasn't, whatever the issue was, he really didn't have no issue with me. It wasn't about me. He was just, 
he had an issue with the situation. I took issue with him having, you know what I mean? So that that scenario taught me something. And then he goes and passes, you know? So it was like, um, it, 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 it reminded me of how you need to conduct yourself. Um, but it's, but it's back to the question though, as far as black directors, there is a lot of camaraderie. Um, you know, my first movie, Next Day Air, came out um, in 2009. And the Saturday morning that it came out, I got two phone calls. The first one was from Reginald Hudlin, who was like, yo, congrats, man. I'm so glad you, you know, you got your first film off the ground. This is the first of many. You got, you're about to go do amazing things. And then my brother F. Gary Gray called me, you know, and, and Gary has been a mentor to me for a long time. And he called right after Reginald. So that's that, that's that camaraderie. You know, it's there. It's definitely there. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. You brought up Reginald Hudlin. And, yeah. you know, you, again, just stay in Hollywood for a second. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was coming up, just as a kid, um, mm -hmm. there, were very, there were very few Black directors in Hollywood. I can think of Robert Townsend. Robert maybe, Townsend, yeah. Um, Keenan Ivory and Ray. Keenan Ivory Wayne, and, yeah. Um, Bill Duke. Bill Duke. Reginald Hudlin. Yeah, uh, but now there's a new crop, and I love it. But it's still a small. It's yeah. still very small. You know, I think of Ava du Duvernay, mm -hmm. the F. Gary Grays, Antoine Fuqua's, mm -hmm. uh, Ryan Coogler. Ryan, yeah, you can't forget that kid. He changed yeah, it. He's killing he changed it. it. Changed it. <laughs> do you have a? Do you have a positive outlook on the future? Yeah. of black directors in Hollywood because Hollywood has always come across as an old boys club. It was. Is that wall breaking down? And we, how can I forget to mention Tyler Perry? Tyler, of course. Tyler Perry is built in Atlanta. Well, the wall is down forever. And the reason I say that is because um, the things that have happened um, like there's just been an explosion of events that all happened at one time, which is not by accident. Um, we tired in terms of us as a black community. And I'm gonna say black because I don't wanna conflate other, the issues of other uh, ethnic or nationalities with our issue by saying people of color, because we, we have a distinct, we, we, we have a distinction of, of an issue because at the end of the day, we were trafficked here and sold into slavery as black people um, in this country and built the land that everybody can now come to. Um, and we have given way more than we've gotten as a people. So it has been, you know, we, we've given so much. We've given our, our, our mothers to help raise the children of other people. We've given our men over to, to wars and unfortunately to the prison system. Uh, we've given so much. Those stories are vast and, and interesting and, and tell the story of America. But for a long time, we couldn't get those stories told. You know, nobody wanted to hear it. You know, the Underground Railroad and the this and the, they didn't want to hear that. Now we have, you know, there's an appetite for it that extends just us. Like when I put Next Day Air, they air out, um, the first thing they told us was, you know, there's no foreign market for this film. So, you know, and, and I'm like, God, you guys ain't even trying. Like, you know, like we talk about like it just going to shut it down like that? Like, yeah, nobody wants to see, you know, we purposefully made a movie. I purposefully made a movie that was like Guy Ritchie for the distinct reason. Like, if you look at that movie, it's like- I know the movie very well. Guy Ritchie type of movie. Yep. We did it like that on purpose because we're like, yo, if they can make Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels and everybody love it and it's a black, it's a gangster film, we can make a funny gangster film too. And at the same time, in that movie, this is one thing I don't think anybody um, that doesn't get talked about. Now. We never used the word nigga in the movie one time. Wow. 
if you go back and watch the movie, there's a lot of a lot of cursing in the movie, but we never allowed somebody on the screen to call somebody else a nigga and then shoot them or do something violent to them. Like we were trying to take that out of the out of our language and out of our and out of our sphere of understanding. Well, you can still have something funny, still have something uh, violent, or still have something storytelling like that. Um, and so um, we 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 decided not to use that word at all. Now, I wish that movie, we could now do that same movie nowadays because we could get international because people want to see that. You have Netflix, you have all these streaming services. There's so much need for content now that we, we, we have to be able to provide stories. They need stories. And I'm going to say it right here. No, nobody's got more interesting stories than we have. Sure, we no. have, we have, yo, we have, we have been, we have been at the bottom for so long and the bottom is where creativity comes from. Creativity don't come from the top. Creativity comes from when you don't have and when you trying, when you're trying to, you yeah. don't have, when you, when we were younger and you got one pair of sneakers every six, six months or three weeks or three months or whatever, Somebody, your cousin told you, yo, if you get a toothbrush and the tooth and you could and you came to school like you had a new, like you had a new fresh pair. Yep. That was because we didn't have and we got creative. You know, we switched the laces out. We're gonna switch the laces colors because that's gonna make it look different. That's gonna be creative. Like, so now the world is catching up to what we already knew about ourselves, that we we are the most creative people on this planet. But we weren't getting the opportunities to do so that. You really do believe that that old boys club wall, not only has it been toppled over, but it's gone for good. The, 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 the era of getting, and let's just call it ethnic films. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I won't limit it to, to, to black, the black experience. Right. You you know the hierarchy the 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 gatekeepers. You feel as though they are more open to stories that are broader than white America. Middle yeah. America really. Yeah, I think I think because now we have black executives. You have Broderick Johnson, Broderick uh, Johnson, I think his name. Um, you have black execs all over the place now, which you didn't have five, even five years ago. I um, remember once uh, being on a lot and I don't know why I was on this lot or what lot it was. I thought it was, it, I, I loved it though. I was out in um, LA and I was on one of those lots and it's like a whole other world in there. Like, yeah, like about the fake it. buildings, all of that. Yeah. But um, there were no black faces. And if they were, they were driving the golf carts yeah. and Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but I think that that has all changed. I still find myself sitting in a room when there's a TV show that I'm directing and I'm the black director and it might be black cast members, but there's no representation of black um, in the writers or anything. Even to be honest with you, even like the the grips and electrics, like, you know, I had talked to a couple of cats out in L.A. about starting an organization um, for guys that want to get into business or women that want to get into business and only and only be a grip or only be an electric. And I only say only because people have aspirations to direct. But I mean, if you are a craftsman and say, you know, or an electrician and say, yo, I want to do electric work for the movies and collect a pension and have a great life and be able to travel and do all that stuff. That's a career that it, it's a good yeah. job. It's a great job to have. It's better than than having a bad job or not having a job at all right but when you look at those those sets there's a limited amount of us in those in those situations so we we see we see the top we see the avas and the tylers and everything and the stuff that's going on and the ryans but you know you go down the tier it starts to disappear and then like it looks like we're making such strides but until we make strides all the way across the board you know, it's not going to really mean anything. That's why I like, I, I'm so happy for like, um, um, in Keche, who is the writer, she's the, the showrunner for All American and she just got another show picked up um, uh, called All American Homecoming. 
And this is a black woman writer that is not scared to tell certain stories the way she wants to tell it. And, um, and, 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 you know, surround herself with other black people and people of color that can help tell the narrative. So it's, you go into that writer's room, it's just as many people of color as are white people in there trying to tell our story. That, I admire that. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.